welcome to lecture number 10 from modern control theory in this lecture we will be considering the application of kelly hamilton theorem for the calcul calculation of inverse of real matrix and the state transition matrix so according to kelly hamilton theorem a square matrix satisfy its own characteristic equation this is the statement for Kelly Hamilton theorem. So, what does it mean? Actually, characteristic equation, as you know, or polynomial in terms of lambda, it is P lambda equal to the determinant of P minus lambda equal to 0. Why i is considered because lambda is a scalar quantity and we have to have a minus a matrix so we should multiply lambda by identity matrix i so getting determinant of this we will be finding an expression in terms of this polynomial lambda if it is 2 by 2 then lambda square plus some constant lambda plus some constant if it is n th order lambda raised to n plus some constant lambda raised to n minus 1 plus some constant lambda raised to n minus 2 plus some constant plus some constant equal to 0 but according to Kelly Hamilton theorem what is it is a square matrix satisfy its own characteristic equation so it does mean p in terms of a function in terms of a equal to 0 that is here it was p in terms of lambda so what it stands for that we should simply replace lambda by a and your expression will be becoming like a raised to n plus some constant, a raised to n minus 1 plus some constant, a raised to n minus 2 plus some constant plus so on. And then lastly, it will be a constant quantity equal to 0. But here, one thing that it is in terms of a in left hand side, therefore, this 0 would be a null matrix of the order of system matrix A, undoubtedly. Now, so initially we have to have the information that your system satisfies or verify the Kelly Hamilton theorem or not before proceeding to determination of inverse of a matrix or state transition matrix of a matrix of that system so according to statement we have to calculate the value of determinant a minus lambda equal to 0 so from here lambda 1 for this system here we are considering this system so it's uh, lambda 1 and lambda 2 can be calculated by this characteristic equation so ultimately this is the characteristic equation in terms of lambda but your Kelly Hamilton theorem is meant for a square matrix A therefore it is in terms of A A square plus 3A plus 2I equal to 0 so this is the characteristic polynomial of the system for considering Kelly Hamilton verification. So, what it is, it is stated that the square matrix satisfy its characteristic equation itself. What does it mean? The value of LHS of this expression characteristic equation 
so v equal to value of x1. So here lambda square plus 3 in plus 2 i should be equal to a null matrix. If this is so, then system matrix A defining the system would verify the kelly hamilton theorem or comply with the principles of kelly hamilton theorem and you can proceed for calculation of inverse or state transition matrix otherwise not not at all okay so we should write by a square plus 3a plus 2i equal to 0 or not by considering lhs bring the value of i is and a in this expression in this way and solving it we will be getting a null matrix which is the requirement of Kelly-Hamilton theorem so in this way we can say that this system which was having elements 0 1 minus 2 minus 3 satisfies or verify Kelly-Hamilton theorem once the statement is proven for a system you can proceed to calculation of the inverse of matrix otherwise not these are the basic conditions because what actually otherwise not for the calculation of inverse of matrix it is again using the characteristic polynomium of the matrix so you have to simply multiply a inverse in LHS term and RHS term. RHS is 0. Therefore, A inverse into the polynomial E square plus 3A plus 2I should be equal to 0. Now, on expression, one thing A square is written as A into A into A inverse. And here, you can see that A into A inverse this is one of the identity of matrix property of matrix so using this property if you are multiplying a matrix to its inverse it is always an identity matrix and if you are multiplying identity matrix to a matrix then it is equal to that matrix only so a into a inverse would be converted to i so here it is a into i plus 3 into i plus 2 a inverse equal to 0 so one thing they see if you observe this expression i is i is known to you k is known to you a inverse can be calculated so 2 a inverse equal to this one and in this way you are able to determine the value of A inverse very much easily. Now what about a state transition matrix? For a state transition matrix initially we should develop the theory if a function f and its characteristic equation is delta then that function divided by the characteristic equation is equal to some quantity of friction plus some remainder over that characteristic equation because characteristic equation is always or either may be equal to or may be less than of the order of the system. So in this way you can get if in terms of eigen values it is function f lambda over delta lambda equal to q lambda plus r lambda over delta lambda or f lambda equal to q lambda delta lambda plus r lambda f lambda equal to r lambda say delta lambda for the systems which are satisfying or verifying Kelly Hamilton delta lambda equal to 0. Delta lambda that is characteristic polynomial that is equal to 0. 
So this term would become zero. F lambda equal to R lambda would be there, and this, or in terms of a, it is F a equal to R a. So, and this would be equal to F naught plus alpha one a plus alpha two e square plus alpha something, and this expression resembles e t power e t expression. So a state transition, which is a state transition, so a state transition matrix can be calculated by F A, which is equal to remainder R A. So initially, what you have to have, you should calculate the values of the eigenvalues of the system. We are having second order system. Two eigenvalues would be there, namely lambda one, lambda two. If it is the third order system, you would be getting three eigenvalues of the system: lambda one, lambda two, lambda three. So, if you are having second order system and you are getting two eigenvalues lambda one and lambda two, then the expression would be equal to f lambda equal to Alpha net not plus alpha one lambda one. So this is this is alpha not plus alpha one lambda one. E t power for second eigen value it is e power lambda two t equal to alpha not plus alpha one lambda two. So one thing that should be cleared. That you are having two eigen values, which can be calculated from the determinant of a minus lambda i equal to zero. Two variables alpha naught and alpha one; these are unknown. Two algebraic equations you are having, so it is easy to calculate the value of alpha naught and alpha one. In this way, by putting this one. You would be able to determine a state transition matrix. Now you can understand by taking an example. A equal to zero one minus two minus three. Its eigen values are lambda one equal to minus one, lambda two equal to minus two. Right. So you are having second order system and the two eigen values. We got by calculating determinant of a minus lambda equal to zero. So now use the expression that is f lambda equal to e t power lambda t equal to alpha naught plus alpha one lambda. So for lambda one equal to minus one e t power minus t equal to alpha naught minus alpha one. Similarly for lambda two equal to minus two you would be getting E t power minus two t equal to alpha naught minus two alpha one. See two expressions are there, and two variables are there alpha naught and alpha one. You will be able to calculate the value of the unknown quantity. So why calculating is this one? Alpha one is calculated, and its value is this one. Alpha naught is calculated, and its value is this. So in this way, you got two variable values, two constant values. That is alpha one and alpha two. Now, by state transition matrix expression, it is e t power a t equal to alpha naught i plus alpha one a. Put the value of i, a, alpha one, alpha naught. All are known to you. By putting and solving further, you will be getting the state transition matrix e t power e t by this expression. So ultimately, what you observe that you have missed the step of Laplace inverse, which sometimes may be cumbersome to calculate inverse of this. Here, it is not needed to determine Laplace inverse directly in terms of T E U are getting the answer. This example was 
for the roots which are distinct minus 1 and minus 2 if your roots are repeated in that case what would happen what procedure you will follow because you would be getting the same eigenvalues for same eigenvalues you would be getting the same polynomial characteristic polynomial if it is so how you would be able to determine or solve that single polynomial expression for two unknown quantities so here this is one of the example i have sent for which is having repeated roots so its roots are lambda equal to minus 1 minus 1 repeated if it is so your polynomial will be having one value that is this one alpha naught plus alpha 1 lambda 1 this is same for lambda 2 equal to minus 1 as well if it is so then how you will be calculating the value of alpha naught and alpha 1 if alpha naught alpha 1 cannot be short your expression will not be short so for calculating for lambda 1 equal to minus 1 you use this expression you ultimately got this expression for another value of lambda which is as equal to minus 1 but here you have to have the derivation and differentiation of this expression both sides with respect to lambda if it is so this is the constant value so its differentiation will be equal to g t to the power minus t because lambda equal to minus 1 equal to alpha 1 so you got alpha 1 and alpha naught minus alpha 1 equal to this one so ultimately you can calculate the value of alpha naught so alpha naught equal to this one and the alpha 1 was known to you t into t to the power minus t two variables or two constants values are known to you now you can put the value of these one in e to the power in t which is the state transition matrix phi t equal to alpha naught i plus alpha 1 a equal to alpha naught into i to the matrix alpha 1 into system matrix A. Just solve and you will be getting finally the expression for e to the power e t into the matrix elements. Right? So it is your state transition matrix how you have calculated using the concept of Kelly Hamilton theorem. So initially you have to have the verification of Kelly Hamilton theorem for that system. Otherwise, you can't follow the steps. These are the references. Thanks.